Hi, good evening everybody and welcome to the daily Rambam Shir, three chapters per day, lesson 163 and 60, 164, Hilchois Masea Korbono is from chapter 13 until 18. So first of all, Moyadim Lesimcho, Gut Moyed, and in this particular days there is a common denominator between the subject of the Korbonois that we are covering these days and the mitzvah of Sukkot we are practicing. Same way as in the mitzvah of Sukkot, just sitting and eating in the Sukkot, a person actually is involved in a spiritual activity, in a godly fulfillment of a commandment. Same way as the actual offering and the eating that the Koyen eats his offerings and the meal offerings, flower offerings and other gifts that are given to him, that is a mitzvah as well. But what that is interesting, and this is the subject of today, first chapter of the first lesson of today, when the Koyen himself brings a flower offerings, so the rule is that it must be entirely consumed by the fire and cannot be eaten by him. And the Rambam explains, though not in the book of Mishneh Torah, in the Meir Nebuchim, he explains the following explanation. If the Koyen will be the one who brings the offering, and he will be the one who eats the offering, it will be viewed in the eyes of the public as he didn't do nothing. Since the offering itself is relatively a small amount and what is being generally given to the altar is even smaller than that. And therefore, even if a small part not going to be consumed entirely in the eyes, in the visual, Ice, it's not going to be seen any service of God. And in fact, the first chapter, the Rambam covers the entire order of the daily flower offering of the high priest. It used to be called Minchas Chavitin. And the process was first, he used to sanctify it with a container, which was, was called the Isoin contains about two liters, and he used to divide this contents that was in there into two halves. Then he brings three lugim of shemen, and from each and every half of a sewin, he used to prepare six halois. A total of 12 halois, where he takes those three lugin measurement of liquid, which comes to about a quarter for each halo, not baking that entirely, it was half raw, as it is written, to fine min chaschitim, to fine is a combination of two words, a fio, no, that the baking was not entirely done, each and every hala is being divided into two, as half of the halo he used to bring in the morning and the other half in the evening. The actual consumption in the fire of each and every offering, the morning and offering, used to be brought with half of a frankincense and entirely burnt. As we have learned yesterday about Minchas Soiles, the Minchas Soiles was not really baked, but used to be mixed with oil quite a few times. Initially, he used to place the flour into the oil, later place back the oil on top of the flour and mix it a few times, add more, uh, oil to it. The other menochis, which was Minchas Marcheshes and Machavas, used to fry 
the dough, while the marcheses used to have a wall to the surface, the machvas had no sides to the container. For that reason, the density of the dough in a machavas was much more dense since it had no walls to support the surface. As we have mentioned yesterday, other two types of flower offering used to be called minchas ma'afei tanu and minchas rekikim. In principle, each and every sewing was enough to bake 10 halois. However, if he add more or less or reduce the actual measurement of the oil, it was not as critical. Towards the end of the chapter, the Rambam introduces the order of bringing the mincho, bringing the meal offering, the removal of the levoino, and the actual koimetz, which was the handful that he used to take from the mincho in order to place it on the altar. Any addition or subtraction, subtraction from the measurement of the koimetz used to disqualify the mincho. The minimum amount that must contain the koimetz is the measurement of two zeisim. And the minimum of oil that was part of the mincho was a lug for each and every sewing. The second chapter deals with the differences between a nedel and a nedovo. Nedel is a vow, and a dovo is when a person commits that he will designate and he points which specific offering is actually designated for the purpose of the korban. Whether it is a living object as animals, birds, or whether it is flower offerings. While a living object like a animal or birds can come in partnerships, which means two partners can take upon themselves and bring one offering, a mincha cannot. The difference between nedel and adovo, though both of them are vows and a gift a person commits to give to the temple, is regarding the liability in case when a person will lose that particular object that he committed. If a nedel was lost, a person will still be liable. If a nedovo were lost, since he was initially specifying this animal or this particular item, so in a case that this item were lost, the person is not going to be liable any longer. The subject of Mikdash Honyoi, Mikdash Honyoi was a temple that was built temporary in Alexandria, in Egypt. And though they had sort of services and offering, nevertheless, it is forbidden Though a uh, Koyhen who actually served in such a temple, th though he was violating, but it's not considered a temple for idol worshipping. However, any type of offering in such a temple is considered to be a subject to Koyhen. So if a person took upon himself a commitment, to bring an offering in this temple, though he may be subject of Koles since he was bringing an offering outside the Yerushalayim, nevertheless, he fulfilled his obligation since he was specifying that he will bring the offering in this temple, and he did. 
When it comes to the offerings of Chatos or Oshon, since they are mandatory in case a person have committed a sin that he deserves to bring those type of offerings, a person cannot bring them under Nedel or Nedovo. However, a person who was already committing to dedicate a Chatos and he is assuming his liability on a specific animal towards the chatos of his friend, he is able to subsidize and pay for the chatos of his friend if the friend actually express consent. A very critical requirement that his mouth and his intention will be identical regarding the specific korban that he is donating. For that reason, if it was actually a contradiction between what he really meant and what really came out of his mouth, so the actual Kodoshim, it's not triggering and it's not holy. However, if a person altogether, he had no verbalization of his commitment, his commitment remained in his heart, he is still obligated to bring the offering since the Torah said, Kol nediv libo yevi'eho, benid v'salev, at the moment that there is the generosity of the heart, there is already an obligation yevi'eho to bring the korban. Another important thing that is very much associated with that particular holiday or any holiday biblical holiday, which is called the Regel, is the issue of Bal Te'acher. An individual is committed to bring his Nedoim, his vows and commitment, the first biblical holiday that he has the chance. And this is a positive commitment, since it's written in the Torah, Uvoso Shomo Vahaveisem Shomo. You will come to Yerushalayim and bring there in Yerushalayim that specific urban that you took upon yourself. While at the first regel there is only a violation from him ignoring a mitzvah saseh, a positive commandment, after three regolim he is also violating a negative commandment, the loisase of Balte Achel. If a person was taking upon himself oilois and shlomim, which are generally type of kolbonis, which are falling under the category of neder and edovo, and he delays to bring, Bezdin are enforcing upon him to such an extent that they taking away a collateral from his assets, and though it is written in the Torah Lirat Soinoi that any type of a donation or Nedovo generous commitment will be done in with his will, nevertheless the rule is Kuifin Oisoi Achiri I will enforce him until he will express a verbal consent, a verbal desire. When it comes to chatos, since it is a mandatory korban, and a person, the process of his atonement is being postponed, I'm not suspecting that he will be negligent, and for that reason, there is no enforcement process associated with people who are obligated to bring chatois. The last chapter of the first lesson deals how far can a person regret and take back his words. So Hekdesh is a very severe and very serious business. For that reason, even even within a blink of an eye, a person cannot really retrieve his word. If a person is dedicating only a partial animal, so the rule is the animal should be sold and the 
funds would remain Hulin, except the funds that representing the cost of that specific limb a person dedicated. When a person said upon one animal, half of the animal will be Oilo, the other one, the other half will be Shlomim, and obviously you cannot bring physically the animal according to his verbalization. The rule is that the animal will be Tire, will go around and uh, in the field until a mum, a defect, will be upon her and she will be sold and from the funds he receive half of the funds will be towards Oilois and the other half will be towards Shlomim. A person who dedicates a animal, a behemoth male, an animal that is not kosher, so depends what was his original expression. If he said, this is Oilo, so Loyomar Klum, he said nothing since those words not applicable at all to such a behemoth. However, if he says le oilo, it will be towards oilo, then this particular non kosher animal should be sold, and with the funds he can go and bring oilo. Lesson 164 starts with the subject that we said before that when it comes to korbonois or any type of nedovois, ple uh, pledges, a person pledges towards hekdesh, moitzo sfosecho tishmeir veosiso nedovo asher dibarto beficho. Whatever comes out of your mouth, you must to preserve, you must to follow exactly as you expressed. So for that reason, if a person took upon himself to bring a large animal and he brings a small, obviously there is a clear violation of his words and he did not fulfill his pledge. pledge. However, if it was the opposite, a person took upon himself that he will bring a young, a small animal and he brought a large animal, so this is not a violation of his promise, since there is a rule, Biklal Mosaim Mone. In the words Mosaim 200, the 100 is already included. If a person just took upon himself without specifying whether he means from the large type or from the small type, the assumption since Kol Hanoisen Be'ayin Yofehu Noisen, anyone who pledges, he gives with a generous I, I will interpret his words accordingly. However, if the Minhag, the custom of this particular place, they are accustomed to interpret in a very, very specific way. For example, if he said that upon myself to bring a oilo from the birds and the custom of that place to link any form of common oilas oif towards doves only, so then obviously he must bring doves. If he did not specify any, he took upon himself, let's say, to bring a dove, but he did not specify whether he means from the most, the best, or the worst. So the rule, he is obligated to bring from the benuni, from the medium size. When a person said this ox is this one, he specified upon this, belongs to Oilo, and a defect came upon this ox. So although, as we said before, as far as liability, he will be exempt since he said and this is an edovo and he will be exempt from liability. Nevertheless, 
he is still allowed to go and sell that particular ox and with the funds he can bring anything that will be oil whether another ox or two or whether even a ram or a sheep when a person took upon himself a general commitment for example he says one from my sheep belongs to Hekdesh so by default I will apply his liability towards the Godel Shebohem towards the bigger one amongst his sheep from this point until the end of the chapter the Rambam deals with different scenario when a person committed to bring a offering and he forgot what type of offering so depends what whether he specified and he forgot his specification or he had a general and he remembers the general commitment without specification so the rule is if a person for example he remember that he specified and he doesn't remember what he actually specified so he must bring from all types if he said a general pledge like he says upon me to bring something towards the altar so amongst the items that are being offered to the altar entirely the only type that can be linked to only something is a comets level you know it's a handful of frankincense because this is the minimum of something that is entirely being offered on the mizbeach however if he remembers that he specified, but he doesn't remember what he specified. So in such a case, he must bring all items that are entirely offered on the Mizbeach, which includes oil as behemo, a oil of animal, a oil of a bird, nesochim, levoino, wine. A general pledge in a nether outside very exceptional cases are preventing a person to bring his needle from Meisel Shani. The reason is, by the end of the day, the prototype of all the Kolbonois are being learned from the first offering the Jews were committed as a nation to bring, which was in Egypt, the first Koban in Mitzrayim, the Koban Pesach. Obviously, it came from the Cholin, something that was not holy yet, because the entire of holiness were not introduced at that point. So for that reason, it is forbidden upon a person to bring any type of offerings from something that is Maisel Shani or any form of a holy object. There is a few exceptions, though, especially in connection to Lachmei Toido and so on. In the next chapter, the discussion is around situation where again, in a context of a mincha, a flower offering, and he took upon himself a pledge and he doesn't remember what, his, what was his pledge. So if he gave a general pledge of a flower offering, if he brought one out of those five flower offering, he fulfilled his obligation. But if a person was already specified and he doesn't remember A, the specification, B, the measurement, so then he must bring all types of menochois and all 
types of measurement ranging from a measurement of one isoin until the measurement of the largest container which were in the temple, which contained 60 esoinois, which is almost equivalent to one container of almost 120 liters. Any larger container of flour was not available, and the reason is because the amount of oil must be theoretically get to a point of mixture with the flour. And above the measurement of 60 esoinois, there is no way that the oil will integrate with the flour. Although in reality, even 60 esoinois not necessarily were each and every part of the flour came into mixture with the oil, but at least it is theoretically possible. And here it became also a very famous principle, the application and the recognition of a theoretical possibility and it is known with the rule called Haroui lebilo ein bilo me'akvosri. Anything that theoretically is subject and is capable to get mixed, though in reality it is have not been mixed, nevertheless, the fact that it's not mixed, it's not preventing that offering to remain as a legit offering. So for that reason, while it is within the range of 60 esoinois, there is at least in theory a possibility for the below for the mixture. There is an interesting connection also to that particular holidays because the same confusion and forgetfulness a person can experience in connection to menochois can happen also in the amount of liquids, how much wine he actually committed. And for that reason, in the most extreme case, I will obligate him to bring 140 lugim because this is the maximum scenario possible which have occurred at the first day of Sukkot who fell on Shabbos exactly like this year. And towards the end, the final chapter of the second lesson, the Rambam reminds us a very interesting concept. If we thought that to do a mitzvah properly is something very hard, so when it comes to Kodoshim, to make a sin is also not a simple project. I will use that subject, the central subject of the last chapter, deals with the prohibition to bring offerings outside the Beis Hamikdosh, which the liability for it will be cause. Same way as to bring an offering, it is associated with cause, to slaughter Kodoshim outside will be chorus as well. However, in order to really be liable, he will be liable only if those Kodoshim, they are qualified to be brought upon the Mizbeach. If for one, re one reason or another, this particular Kodoshim would not be qualified to be brought upon the Mizbeach in the real temple, he won't be liable if he brought them outside. For example, he brings over here a many list of many scenarios where he will be exempt from slaughtering or offering them outside since inside they are not qualified to be brought. For example, 
or because they are premature before their eight days, or because they are linked to with the prohibition of oisoy ve'es benoid. The ruling is it is forbidden to slaughter an animal and its child the same day. So if, for example, the child was already slaughtered and then he is going and slaughtering the mother outside the temple, he will be exempt because even inside this animal is not qualified for offering since it is associated with Isu. There is another scenario where the Baal HaKorbon, the owner of the Korbon, he is still missing the days that are necessary to complete and terminate his tomb estate. For example, if he is Azav or Ayuledes, there is another situation where a person, he is slaughtering a Oshom Tolui outside. The Oshom Tolui is being brought in a case where it's not certain whether the person actually committed a crime or not. So for that reason, there is, in theory, a possibility that this Korban should not have been brought inside. For that reason, if he is bringing such a Korban outside, he's not going to be liable. Or if he's slaughtering the Korban before the doors of the Heichal opened up. Since you are not allowed to bring inside any form of offering before the opening of the Heichal, for that reason, if he has slaughtered outside, he's not going to be obligated. A few more examples. If he actually offered the animal outside um, at night, he basically he went and slaughtered the animal inside the temple at night, which is forbidden, and then he went ahead and he offered the imuim, or if it is the oilo, the entire behemo on top of a mizbeach outside. In such a case, he will be exempt because slaughtering in Beis Amikdosh by night, it's not a proper act. Which reminds me all those uh, scenarios, a story that happened with the um, Friedrich Kirebe once upon a time, he met someone who asked him, he offered him to put on tefillin. This individual rejected by claiming that he is a epicurious, a heretic. And then the Friedrich Rebbe turned to him and told him, to be a heretic takes lots of effort, lacks a lot of accomplishment. From knacken semichkes, which means like to eat sunflower seeds, or basically not do much, you don't qualify yet to be an apicurus. Similarly over here, and later we will see it in future halachos when it comes to Kodoshim, that in order to commit a proper sin in Kodoshim takes lots of condition that must come together in a very perfect coordination in order for the avail to trigger. Thank you so much and have Moyadim Lesimcho and Chagim Uzmanim Lesosin in a great new year.